Gus here to talk about one of my newest favorite games, Crusader Kings 3. If your experience with it was anything like mine, your first few days were extremely overwhelming. I'm a couple hundred hours in now and ready to share the things that I wish I knew when I started playing. The first thing I wish I knew is that Crusader Kings 3 is an RPG in hiding. Nowhere is this more obvious than the stress system. While plenty of things can give your character stress that you don't have a ton of control over, the most reliable way to stack on tons of stress is by playing against your ruler's character. If you you've got the greedy trait, giving things away frequently will be very problematic. At the same time, playing to that greed and extorting your subjects for lands and gold will keep your stress levels down. There is some interesting effects to be had by playing at higher stress levels for a long enough time. Some of the stress relief traits can give interesting bonuses like Drunkard, which make hosting feasts even more effective at stress relief and opens up new options to make the feasts more effective as well. Next. Don't fear confederated partition. Losing lands can be annoying, but far from run ending most of the time. If you don't notice until it's too late, you'll have claims to anything you lose and should have a strength advantage to reclaim through war. If you do notice in time, even without the sadistic trait necessary to murder your kids, you have options. If your religion has holy orders, it's not too hard to send third and beyond heirs off to them. Then for your spare, you can just use the disinherit option. If a holy order isn't an option, you'll probably be fine to just imprison the kids and let that take them out. If you're not having any luck on either of those fronts, you can force sons to be knights and then send them off to very unfavorable fights and have them lose. The next thing I wish someone had told me was not to neglect my lands. The bonuses may seem insignificant in the first century or two, but they lay the foundation for wild gains in the mid and late game. Emergency influxes of cash can be had from golden obligations as well as raiding or sieging weaker opponents and also ransoming off prisoners. So investing that gold into your long-term growth is usually a smart idea. Improving your core lands also leaves you in a better position to deal with succession problems or hostile factions as you'll be less reliant on your width for your power base. There's too much to be said about the how of this one for my simple video, but the simple answer is focus first on your primary county filling out each slot, then branch out to your other counties and filling their slots. Then you can start working on the upgrades. This one is going to be super weird for people used to other strategy games, but you don't win Crusader Kings 3. Unlike most strategy games, there is no clear-cut win or loss condition that you're working towards. Your game can end early if you don't have an heir, or if you're deposed from all of your titles, but other than that, you can just keep playing until the end date. While this can feel bizarre at first, it also means that you have the liberty to play whatever way you enjoy the most. Want to form a mighty empire? Go for it! Rather stay small and influence things through diplomacy and subterfuge? Totally doable. Now this one is not only something I wish somebody had told me, but perhaps is one of the most surprising things that I learned in my first few hundred hours. But playing as a vassal can be extremely fun. Ruling an independent realm is fraught with dangers both internal and external, and it can feel like the best way to secure your position is with expansion. However, swearing fealty to a king or emperor can really help cut down on those external threats and give you a safe place to develop your realm in relative peace. Serving on the council of your liege gives very helpful benefits, particularly being the steward of large and well-developed realms. The last tip is by far the most important one. But before I get to it, if you thought this video was helpful, I'd love if you hit the like button. And if you have any tips you'd like to share, let me know down in the comments. The most important thing I wish I had known going into Crusader Kings 3 was to play through adversity. My first three or four games, I'd inevitably get floor wiped by Vikings in the first hundred years. And thinking I'd blown it, I would start a new game. I assumed every time that I'd figure out how to avoid that mega loss, and then I'd be fine. But what I actually needed to develop my skills was to keep playing through the losses. Playing through your mistakes and losses gives you the chance to learn the vital skill of recovery. So next time you see your last army wiped off the board, instead of reaching for the escape key, just hit that surrender button and see what happens next. Now that you're all teed up, go put these things into action. And if you want to see how I've used these tips, you can check out my playthroughs in this playlist right here. 